Brandon Castello, OSU beat reporter for the Ozone. He joins us now with uh, no shortage of things to talk about. Brandon, it's great to have you on. How are things? You staying busy, my friend? I am. Well, yeah, you're a little bit busy this time of year, a little bit busier than usual, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go back to Monday just real quick. I don't want to rehash the whole situation, but you found out like everybody else, and your initial reaction, or I guess in the uh, in the aftermath, your reaction is what? Well, I, I was surprised. I, I really was. I know that, and I, and I wrote a, a, a column that day about how it was shocking but not completely unsurprising that it actually happened. But uh, on that day when I heard the news, I was surprised. I had been talking to some people the day before, uh, and they, everyone that I come in contact with who knows I cover Ohio State wants to know whether I thought he was going to be uh, let, let go or resigned. Or, and I kept telling people I didn't think that was going to happen because I thought that from the beginning Jim Trestle had set, him up, set himself up to say, I can take it, I can handle it, whatever you're going to throw at me, whatever's going to come out, whatever they're going to say about me, I can, with, I can endure it, I can take it. Um, in the end, I didn't count on maybe some of the higher-ups at Ohio State couldn't take it, didn't want all that heat on the university anymore. And so, when I, yeah, I was pretty shocked on Monday. And, and I guess, Brandon, it's one of those things that, you know, you cover this beat pretty intensely. You have a lot more knowledge of this than most fans and certainly than I do. But there's even stuff you have to assume that you don't even know that, that may have been caused for this resignation. Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff that, that could have been going on behind the scenes. I mean, you, you never know what, what's being said. I mean, there's with all the stuff that's come out and all the the different things that the different uh, things that people have to say, there's got to be a lot of there had to be a lot of tension between Gene Smith, Gordon Gee, the the board of trustees, Trestle, a lot of the people, uh, you know, the people who are really in the in the, the command of the football program. There had to be a lot of tension, a lot of stress. Uh, a lot of just stuff going on behind the scenes, trying to figure out what, how it was going to play out, how it was going to look, what would be the best thing for the football program, for the university uh, going forward. And, and, yeah, so we don't even know what could have happened behind the scenes. Because if you think back to the initial press conference, uh -huh. Gordon Gee and Gene Smith were very – they were behind Trestle 100%. Gene Smith said, end of the day, he's our coach. Gordon Gee obviously made the, you know, now famous quote about, I just hope he doesn't fire me. So you have to think there had to be some behind-the-scenes things that happened between then and now for such an about face. Talking to Brandon Castell, OSU beat reporter for the Ozone, joining us here on Neft at Night, 97 won the fan. Moving forward, Luke Fickle is the coach for this year, so let's just stick on that for one second. And uh, What do you know? What do you like, dislike, whatever? What are your thoughts on Fickle? Well, it's interesting because um, now you've got a guy who was potentially going to be in the, who was going to be interim coach for, for five games, but now he's going to be the interim coach for the whole season. He's never been a head coach. Um, he's never really been a coordinator. He, he's technically Ohio State's co-defensive coordinator, but I, mean, mm -hmm. I think people would say that Jim Haycock is their defensive coordinator. So, never really been a coordinator. Never really been a head coach. So you're talking about a guy who's thrust from being a linebackers coach all the way up to being now the interim head coach at Ohio State. That's a huge jump to make. But I think Fickle's ready. I think he's um, mentally. Now, I don't know how they're, they'll do on the field performance-wise, but I think that he is prepared for that. I think that he is the right kind of personality. Um, he's fiery. The guys get behind him. If you talk to uh, some of the guys who have played under him, a lot of the defensive guys, James Laurinaitis and uh, Brian Roll, Ross Holman, those type, of, those type of guys, they'll tell you, he is like a second head coach out there. I've, I've always heard them talk about him being the head coach of the defense, which I thought was weird because Jim Haycock's the defensive coordinator, but I think during practices and things like that, he kind of he's the guy. He's the guy at the forefront. He's the vocal leader. He gets after it. I mean, if you're watching Ohio State's practice, he's out there, you know, hitting bumping shoulders and getting down and form tackling. I mean, he's going through all the stuff. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't let anybody slack off out there. I guess the question now, too, is with this uncertainty going into 2012, because Fickle's the coach this year. He'll probably get an interview. Other guys will probably get an interview. It'll be an open search. You know, it's got to be tough for him to recruit and maybe even re-recruit guys who have committed, wanted to go to Ohio State. Now teams are trying to cherry pick. So put that into perspective. You're a guy who covers a little bit of recruiting. You know about these guys. Uh, what's the situation like there? Yeah, that's actually going to be the most interesting thing to watch over the next year, year and a half, um, is, is what happens with recruiting because you're already going to have guys who are going to be uncertain about coming in with potential sanctions, at least until that fact comes clear and we find out what the NCAA is going to rule. But potential sanctions, potential bowl bans, things that, that, like that sort of So guys are going to be a little uneasy already. And then you've got the uncertainty at the coaching position that you don't know. I mean, is, is Luke Fickle going to be the guy in 2012? I, you just don't know that. I mean, he can go out and sell a guy, and, and I, don't, I don't know how many fans have heard, but obviously Ohio State had a big commitment in, in Kyle Callis, the offensive lineman uh, from Cleveland, who was prepared to back out of his commitment. And he decided to stay after a 45-minute conversation with 
with Fickle, and, and that's the thing. Fickle can recruit. He can sell guys on the program. He's been one of their best recruiters since he's been on the staff. Um, he believes in Ohio State. He loves Ohio State. I mean, he could sell Ohio State to a Michigan fan. He's that you know he's that passionate about the university. But the one thing that has that Ohio State's had going for them for the last ten years, that or the last the last five, that most of the programs don't is stability within the coaching staff. Very little turnover. Very little uncertainty about the future. Mm-hmm. Chris Russell's going to be the coach. These guys are going to be the coordinators. This guy's going to be your position coach. You know, and, and that's how people viewed it. If you talk about some of the big name players who committed to Ohio State, a lot of it was, well, I wanted to go somewhere where I knew how it was going to play out. I knew that these guys were going to be my coaches for my whole four years in college. And Talking you can't again, say that right now. Sorry about that. Talking again to Brandon Castell, from OSU beat reporter from the Ozone, their website, the-ozone.net. And let's wrap it up with some talk about Terrell Pryor. I know as a beat guy, you don't you know always write columns necessarily or speculate all the time, but make heads or tails of the Pryor situation. There's about a million different angles this could go, but I guess the bottom line is, is he going to play for Ohio State in the fall? What do you think? Well, <laughs> it's tricky. I've been yeah. on a couple other calls this week, and, and uh, people have wanted to hear my definitive answer on that, and, and don't want to throw Terrell under the bus because I don't think we know for certain if all the stories and all the uh, things that have come out in either the Sports Illustrated story or any of the other publications or anything. We don't we don't know for certain it's all true. It's all you know out there, and that the NCAA is going to say these things all happen. Um, with that being said, I, I start to I start to think that it's going to be hard to imagine him playing another game at Ohio State. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't know that, that we can say all these things are true, but there seems to be a lot of stuff coming forward that seems to, to maybe fit some of the murmurs and rumors we've heard of. You know, I hear all kinds of stuff but uh, over the years, but I'm hearing from people who are pretty well connected that, you know, it's not looking good for Terrell. Um, he's still around the team right now, and he's still apparently trying to be a Buckeye, wants to be a Buckeye, but I wouldn't be surprised if, they end up moving forward with the new quarterback in the fall. All right, real quick, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. You uh, you surveyed the media a couple months ago going into practice about who would be the quarterback for the first five games. Now it could potentially, we don't know for sure, but it could potentially be the quarterback for the whole season. Who, if Pryor's not here, do you think gets the range for the bulk of the 2011 season? Yeah, I've been I've been planning to write the, the follow-up story because I, I pulled the media after the spring as well, and but this stressful stuff has kind of taken precedence. Sure. But, um uh, kind of the, the feeling, and I agree, is that, that Joe Bowserman will probably start the first game just because, I mean, well, we don't know for certain now with Trussell being gone, but so many of his assistants and Pickle and those guys are all very, think very much like Trussell. And with that being said, I would think Bowserman probably gets the nod, but especially if Terrell's not around, I think you got to think Braxton Miller um, or maybe Taylor Graham if he really did make a push during the spring. But one of the younger guys, I would say, by game two, three, four, five, somewhere in there, when you start to move forward, you start to think about Ohio State football, in 2012, in 2013, you start to move forward. you got to start looking at one of those guys, unless Joe comes out and just lights the world on fire. BCAS, great stuff as always. We appreciate it. We'll hopefully talk to you soon and be talking about uh, more fun things. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. Enjoy the time out there. Enjoy the weather, and uh, have a good weekend.